Hello. Well, if you're tuning in, I know one thing about you. You're wearing hearing aids of some kind, whether they're in the ear, behind the ear. You maybe even purchased them new recently, or you've had them for a period of time. At your fitting, we go through a lot of information and we want to make sure that that information is conveyed clearly to you. So what we'd like to do today is talk about batteries, domes, filters, things that will be helpful to you when you're at home and maybe having a question of, I forgot. They told me so much and I just don't remember it all. So that's what the purpose of this video is as we go through some of the things that will be beneficial to you. Let's talk about batteries. If you're wearing a traditional hearing aid, you're going to have a battery that still has a tab on it. And that just simply means your battery door will open. So if we just take this behind the ear hearing aid and pull the battery door open, that is where the battery door is housed. So if you do still have a traditional hearing aid that does take a battery, we call this a daily battery that needs to be changed, typically anywhere from 5, 7, 10, 14 days. So yes, they are still making them and yes, still people are wearing them. And when you change your battery, what you're going to want to do is just take the battery out of the door. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a battery from one of our packages. They come in four different sizes. So when you were sent home with your batteries, you would have gotten the color-coded battery. What I want to show you about the battery package is the fact that the battery should be dialed up here at the 12 o'clock position. You're going to flip the battery package over and open the battery door. When you open the battery door, you're going to put that little battery right inside your hand. That little tab on there is saving the battery. That just simply means to activate the battery, we're going to pull that tab off. When we pull the tab off, the air goes into the battery and activates it. So this is called a zinc air battery. Recommendations are you take the tab off and you let it charge or get that air into the battery for about two minutes. So we're gonna pretend that this has been two minutes, it's gotten into the battery, and we're gonna go ahead and put that right inside our door. Your battery is only gonna fit in the door one way, and typically it's gonna be flat side up. If I put the battery in the door upside down, guess what happens? The door doesn't shut. So it's a little bit foolproof, which is really nice. So when you put that battery in the door, battery simply goes like that, and then you can shut the door. Then the battery will power the hearing aid and it will power up. The important thing to remember is this is how you turn your hearing aid on. And at night, you're just gonna simply take your door and open it, and that turns it off. Most hearing aids have something called a dead battery indicator or low battery indicator. It will tell you when that battery goes low. Your provider should have given you an idea of how long that will be. And hopefully you got some handouts that talked about that too. But this is a traditional battery. So we want you to be aware of that as well. Let's talk about rechargeable batteries. I would tell you about 90% of what we're currently doing in our clinic is rechargeable. So I have three sets of hearing aids right here that are all rechargeable. And what I want you to know about your devices is that they need to go on the charger when you're not wearing them. You cannot overcharge them. Just plug the charger into the wall and this is where they go when you're not wearing them. I wanna give you an indication about how this works. And so every little charger is gonna be just a little bit different. But when you put your hearing aid in the charger, the bottom of the hearing aid always goes into the charger. So when you take your device off, you're gonna take it off, take the bottom and just simply place it into the charger. When you do that, the hearing aid turns off and the hearing aid will charge. For most hearing aids that are rechargeable, recharging takes between three to four hours. So from fully dead to fully charged, about three to four hours. And most of those batteries are gonna last 20 to 24 hours. So you should never run out of battery. If you are starting to get less than a full day's use on a rechargeable battery, please tell your audiologist. What I want you to notice about these three um, chargers that I have here is a good way to know if they're charging is when you plug them in, the little light is gonna come on right here. So every charger is a little bit different. It's either gonna be a light on the charger or it's gonna be a light on your hearing aid. So what I would tell you is when you put that, that hearing aid onto the charger, it's gonna typically start yellow. That just means the battery is being detected or the hearing aid is being detected by the charger. And then once it starts charging, it's gonna blink a certain color. What I want you to think about is when you go in the morning to pick them up, they should always be solid green. Solid green means fully charged, ready to go. If you're getting any error messages is what we call them on your charger, those lights are going to be blinking different colors and you will get a handout at your fitting for that. Let's talk about cleaning. Every day when you take your device out of your ear, I want you to wipe it off. So I'm going to take this behind the ear right now off of my ear. 
There it is. You probably didn't even see it. And I would want you to use a Kleenex or a soft cloth and I want you to wipe the end off. Just make sure that we get any dirt, dust, debris, wax, oils, anything that might be on there, we wanna make sure we clean that off every day. Some of you are gonna have no wax and some of you are gonna have lots of wax. It's really gonna be dependent on your ear. But just please make sure you wipe it off every day. If you're wearing an in-the-ear hearing aid, something like this, you wanna make sure we take it out and we do the same thing. We wipe the earpiece off every day. What I wanna tell you is about the pieces that are inside the piece that goes into your ear. On the end of most devices, there's a little dome is what we call this. You may have a custom piece, but either way, it wipes off every day. This little piece is called a dome. You're going to have something that looks maybe like one of these. Super important that every hearing aid comes with a different dome, and you want to make sure you know with your provider which ones you take. Here at Complete Hearing, we do document all of this in your chart. So you got sent home with some domes. The biggest question we get is how often do I need to change those? I would tell you it's gonna be different for every patient, but if you wanna get in a good habit about every other month, it's not a bad idea to change your dome. To change your dome, you're gonna grab the corner of it and you're simply gonna pull off. So just pull and it will come right off. My recommendation for you is to take this dome and throw it away. Because if you take a new one out, you're not gonna know which one is clean and which one is dirty. So just make sure you throw that away. Once we take our dome off and we've thrown it away, there's another little piece underneath there that we call the filter. The filter is there to protect the speaker from wax. So the other piece that you're gonna change if you're gonna do this every other month is to make sure we change our filter as well. Guess what? Just like all the domes we had, we have many, many, many different kinds of filters. So your hearing device will take a different filter depending on the manufacturer that you have purchased. When I open up this little matchstick, it's just like pushing the part and you're gonna see, we call it matchstick because it looks like matches. And we're gonna take this little piece out. And the first thing I want you to see is there is a stick side, we call it the removal side, and then there's a new filter on the other side. So what you wanna do with this piece, if you have a receiver in the ear and your speaker, you're gonna take that tip and you're gonna simply push it in the end and it'll kind of click so you can kind of feel it and then you're gonna pull it out. So that's your removal tool. Flip the stick over and then simply put the new filter in and that's how you change that. And this one also then gets into the trash, okay? So I recommend people change these if they're not having any of the issues about every other month. We do have patients who have very sticky wax or this tends to get plugged up a little bit more. Um, what's gonna happen is your hearing aid is gonna start to kind of sound like this. Everything will get very, very muffled. And so that's the time when you want to change this as well. At Complete Hearing, you, if you have a wellness plan, we do do this for you every time you come in for your cleanings and checkups. So if it's something you'd like us to take care of, please let us know because we would love to have that opportunity to take care of uh, really thoroughly cleaning your hearing aids and replacing these parts for you. Well, now I replaced the filter and now we're gonna put the dome back on. Your domes come in little packages like this. They might be black, they might be gray, they might be white. It depends on the manufacturer. But with most of them, what I'm gonna tell you is you're just gonna flip your package over. You're gonna open up the little tab like that and there's domes in there. And I'm just gonna grab one of those domes. Doot, doot, doot. And I would tell you my best recommendation for this is to simply take your receiver and your dome and push them straight together. Okay, there's no twisting, there's no turning typically, but what I do is I make sure I push them straight together and then I always give it a little tug to make sure that's fully on there. And that's how you place your, your dome back on. Your dome may not look like this. Your dome may not be this color, but it's very traditional that this pulls off and just pushes back on exactly the same way. So that's how you change your dome and you change your filter. If you are wearing an in-the-ear hearing aid, it also has a filter that's on the canal piece that goes in your ear. So what I would tell you here is that you would use something like this, same concept. Remember I told you they're very similar. Each of them has a removal tool and each of them has a little bit of another filter. So here I would take off the filter. You heard that one snap, pulls out, I'm moving over and I'm putting the clean one in. So this works the same way for an in the ear as it does for a receiver in the ear. All right, that's all about cleaning. We do send you another tool that we get asked a lot of questions about and it's this little piece right here. We call this a three-in-one tool 
It has a brush on one side, it has a pick on the other, and actually it has a magnet on the top. Traditionally, if you're wearing something like a um, traditional hearing aid that has a battery, that magnet comes in handy to pick up your battery. The brush side is to brush your microphones. You have microphones on whatever hearing aid you have. On a hearing aid that goes behind your ear, they're typically on the back side towards the top. On occasion, I would say maybe once a week, go ahead and brush across those to make sure that that stays clean. You can get dust and dirt, debris, hair follicles, things like that. So just make sure we keep those clean. On an in-the-ear hearing aid, it's gonna be on the face plate or on the outside of the hearing aid is where you would brush. So that's what the brush is for. Let's talk about the pick. On the pick side, um, you can do two things with this. If you're wearing a receiver in the ear style, um, there's a little hood right here that I'm gonna show you. I just wanna show you that the fact that there's a little hood under there, and sometimes we stick the pick through there to see if there's any wax inside there. So that's a good thing to do. Um, on an in-the-ear hearing aid, there is always typically a vent that is drilled through the bottom of the hearing aid. So that's another place that you can go and scoop wax out. Whenever you're using the pick side, kind of a scooping motion is best with an in-the-ear hearing aid. I would tell you what's really interesting about hearing aids is they're very durable. And so you should not be having issues um, with being so concerned that they're so fragile. Uh, there's things that you want to avoid. We don't want to get them wet. They are very water resistant, but they are not waterproof. So we avoid water. We don't get in the shower with them. We don't swim with them. If they ever get wet, what we want you to do is make sure that you just take them off and let them dry by themselves. No direct heat. We don't put them uh, in, under a hair dryer. We don't stick them in the microwave. Uh, things that you just don't want to do to an electronic device. We tell our patients you want to treat your hearing aid like you would treat your cell phone. Uh, the additional things you don't want to do is don't wear them around loud environments. If you're going to mow the lawn, do some woodworking, um, anything that would be loud where you should be wearing hearing protection, that's what we would recommend you do and taking your devices out. They do not serve as hearing protection when they are turned off. Um, the other thing we would tell you is just making sure that this is a daily thing you're doing every day in terms of putting them on. Your brain can only adjust if you're giving it stimulation every single day. Your success is going to depend on daily use of hearing aids, getting that brain rewired to the sounds that you've been missing. Thanks for checking in today. Uh, hopefully you've learned something. I would encourage you if you have questions, don't hesitate to give our office a call. In addition to that, we have something called New Owners Class. We have that the first and third Monday of every month from 11 to 12. It's a great time for you to come into the office. We can go over this hands-on with you right here in the office. You can ask any questions you might have, and we'd be glad to do that with you. Just give us a call and let us know you're coming.